Hello and welcome to an episode of Atomic Vinyl Reviews. My name is Jacob and today I've got another unboxing for you guys. In fact, this is the first unboxing I've done in a while. This is actually the first unboxing or video that I'm filming since I've actually had a brand new member of the family, which I want to introduce you guys to. So hold on a sec. This is my little puppy. Her name's Coffee. She's just over two months old and isn't she adorable? Say hi to everyone, Coffee. Yeah, she's pretty laid back at the moment, just chilling in the background. So you might see her wandering around in the background of this and some of my future videos. That'll be fun. Say hi to everyone, Coffee. Hello. Yeah, she's a really good girl. Except for when she pees all over the floor, it's not that great. Regardless, let's get to it. So, like I was saying at the beginning of this video, unboxing. First one in a while. The last one I did was actually this bootleg figure here. Uh, this has actually been a pretty cool figure. I'm actually uh, pretty happy with this one, and I'm thinking of actually modifying its face. So if you're interested in where I got this one, I have a video up on my channel. Alright, so let's get into it. In this box, what I'm hoping I should have in here is a figure that pretty much everyone in the grandma already owns, but for whatever reason this took forever to actually get to me. The damn thing wasn't released till, till pretty recently and then I had to wait quite a while for it to actually ship over here. But we got it. Finally I've got it in hand. It's not every day you get a brand new Monster Arts figure. Yes indeed. You guys know what it is, because obviously you read the title of the video and such, but this should be the SH Monster Arts Mechagodzilla 2021 figure. So the version of Mechagodzilla from Godzilla vs. Kong. So very excited for this one. Look in here, we've got some packing beans. Um, the design has grown on me over the, over the time that I have uh, spent contemplating it. It's still not on the same level as say your classic 74 Mechagodzilla or your Kiryu in my opinion. I'm, I still much prefer those sort of ones but just I think it's pretty cool for what it is. Um, I, I've, I've had kind of mixed feelings on the design for a while but I think it's it's growing on me. But I, I think I really need to kind of see some really decent figures of it for it really to solidify and this is looking like it's gonna be the one. Oh yeah there it is. Can already see the box right there. Alright, I've got most of the packing material out, so let's actually try and get this thing out. Lovely um, little paper, crepe paper packaging we got around this thing just for extra protection, so that's a nice little touch. They obviously cared about the way this is packed, so that's really good. There we go. Alright, so I put the box aside. Don't need that for now. But here we have it. Godzilla vs. Kong. Make a Godzilla from Godzilla vs. Kong 2021. It's kind of an odd way to title this thing. Most Godzilla figures from the Monster Arts line are titled uh, Godzilla 2019, for example. Or um, Make a Godzilla 1994, or something like that. Whereas this one here actually has a, a kind of a longer title where it's like actually lists the movie it's from. So that's a little bit different to the way these are normally titled. And this box is done in pretty much the same style as your other Godzilla and Kong boxes from the Monster Arts line from the Godzilla vs. Kong film. It's done with the same sort of blue, orangey, fiery uh, background and just photos of the figure all around on the box. To be honest, I'm not too keen on the kind of look of this box in particular. I think Monster Arts have some much more visually appealing boxes in their line. Actually, something else this box is lacking and I would have liked to have seen is this front picture here, or just any of the pictures. Some of the older boxes I remember in the line, even these ones where they're the, uh, the boxes without the clear hole in them so you can see the figures, so these like solid colored boxes, I remember a lot of them would do this cool effect where they would have like a gloss over the actual image of the figure or the kaiju or whatever on the front or the lettering and then the background would just stay this matte texture. This one they didn't bother to do anything like that so that's a little 
a little nitpicky, but we don't get these things for the boxes. We get them for the figure inside. But I thought I'd just go a little bit extra with this one, since for a Monster Arts, this one's actually quite pricey. Before we actually jump into this Mecha Godzilla figure, I'm gonna shout out a review that's probably gonna be coming really soon in the future. It's a figure of this Mecha Godzilla from a brand, I think it's called BN. Uh, it's really hard to get because it's only sold in mainland China, at least at the moment, or just in Asia at the moment. But I have found it on AliExpress. I don't know how legit the listing was. It wasn't necessarily cheap. But I decided to bite the bullet and order it. So if you guys haven't seen this figure, it's basically a really cool looking uh, version of this design of Mechagodzilla. But it's done in like a vinyl sort of X plus or Bandai type vinyl, I, I'm imagining, form. But it scales in like the 25 centimeter scale. So it scales approximately with the Ichiban Kuji figure of of Godzilla from uh, Godzilla vs Kong, for example, which I have over off to the side, but it's kind of difficult to get. Ah, here we go. So this guy here, so it should scale with this thing in theory. So that's a review that I'm gonna have coming up in the near future, if that thing ever actually arrives. You know, postage from China does take a while, so we'll see. So that's something that, if you guys are interested, I recommend sticking around on my channel f uh, to have a look at. But for now, we got f this figure, finally. Oh man, seriously, I've seen like everyone else uh, already unbox and review this guy. So now it's finally my turn. Uh, well, I actually haven't seen any full reviews of this thing, to be honest, because I wanted to be surprised. But I have. I have heard that it has some issues potentially with some joints and things. Uh, some of like the pistons and the legs I've heard could break pretty easily. So I'm going to be very careful with this thing, but I've been so excited for this one because Monster Arts is really good when it comes to their mecha figures. Their sort of machine-like figures. I mean, they're really good when it comes to anything, really, but uh, still, I'm still very excited for this one regardless because um, I do really like their mecha figures. And wow. All right, he is a chunky boy. Yeah. Oh, that looks nice. That looks nice. I'm really curious to see this thing, you know, articulating and moving, because that's really gonna be where this thing shines, I bet. But just to show you guys, look at that. Very nice. Ah, oh, can't believe I finally got this thing in hand. Let's let's just jump right in. So. Simple, simple figure. Well, I say simple, it's probably a very complicated figure, looking at it, but it doesn't come with really any accessories except for these hands and alternate poses, because I guess they couldn't get the hands to articulate for whatever reason, which is kind of surprising to me, but I do prefer this solution than, like, the, where is it, the Bandai Vinyl figure, where they have this, like, really weird cast, like, the fingers are all, like, scrunched in, like, a fist on both hands it looks kind of weird but before before this was my favorite figure of this particular mecha godzilla but i also do have the playmates versions which we can compare them to later i'm just gonna pull this guy out gently comes out with no problem this little bit that always kind of floats around in the box afterwards a little bit of plastic protection and ooh, nice Okay, the uh, the first thing I want to check is the tail, because I can already feel that's kind of moving, and the tail is, you know, what what really shines in a lot of Monster Arts figures articulation-wise. Uh, Sculpt-wise already, I'm going to just flat out say this thing is phenomenal, very high attention to detail, very crisply done, looks very accurate to the version of this guy we see on film, yeah. All in all, looks really nice. Uh, a lot of people complain about the paint on this thing being too minimal. They wanted like more reds and stuff, which from one a from one aspect I do get. You know, the more paint, the better in a lot of ways. But I don't know. I'm kind of iffy about them trying to replicate like a red glow with paint because we've seen it attempted in a lot of other figures over the years. With your, your Shin Godzilla's, your 
burning Godzillas, all sorts of things like that, and it really is very hit or miss. You can have some really high-end figures look really crappy at the end of the day just because they attempted to have that glowing color, but done in paint, where it should have been done with actual lighting in the way it was done in the film, because it's not something you can really replicate without actually doing it that way. The best sort of solution they've done so far from what we've seen over the years is using clear plastic and stuff like that, but that's really not something you can do on a, a mecha figure like this, which is very, you know, metallic. <laughs> I'm actually glad they actually kept the paint really basic when it comes to the reds, although what I would have liked to have seen is more greys and more sort of shading done in that way. For example, we've got the... Uh, the Kiryu figure here, this is the uh, Heavy Arms version from Tokyo SOS. And just the, the way it's got some airbrushed, darker greys and gunmetal textures o over the seam lines and lots of little areas around it really helps bring out the sculpt on this thing. Uh, this is, in general, one of my all-time favorite Monster Arts figures ever, so I really wanted to compare these two. And yeah, the paintwork is a bit more basic on this guy. I am seeing some... Some other greys and stuff uh, and different metallic tones throughout this figure, but it really doesn't have that quite that same effect. So it's a little bit more flat looking, but honestly, nowhere to the extent that I've seen people like really, really complain about it online and be like, oh, just it's not worth even buying because, you know, which I thought was ridiculous because just every time I saw a photo of this thing, I was like, Man, that looks really nice. And and this is coming from somebody who, especially at the time, wasn't particularly sold on the design itself. But just looking at the way the figure was executed, I don't know, man. I just, I thought it looked pretty damn sick. And it's it's quite satisfying to actually have this thing in person. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy. So at the moment, I am a little bit cautious about bending any of the... The arms and the legs, because people have stated that it does have some potential issues with those, but luckily on mine, nothing looks like it's broken outside of the box, which I've heard a couple of people bring up. I've actually been lucky that that's never really happened with any of my Monster Arts figures. I've had figures that have, have had loose bits in the box, but they were not broken. Nothing was snapped off, just ball joints that weren't popped in properly or something like that. But yeah, with this guy I'm going to be pretty careful, which is fine, because, you know, once you start working the joints, I bet they'll be quite smooth over time anyway. So I'm not really worried about that. But look at that. Detailing is beautifully crisp on this thing. Beautifully crisp. And I mean, everything is detailed on, on this particular design. It's a very, very busy looking design. And I like that. I like the busyness of it. But one thing that I kind of... Like, again, when I was saying that I'm kind of on the fence about this design is it has a really awkward proportion to it. The the arms are really big and thick and weird proportioned compared to, say, the lower, lower portion of his body down around the hips where his body's really thin. He looks kind of top-heavy. He, he almost has no real neck his neck is very short it looks like his head basically comes off just above the chest i mean of course he has a neck but lengthwise it's it's very minimal compared to your typical sort of other mecha godzilla design for example like bringing kiryu here very very nicely proportioned kiryu it's a very very godzilla like proportion to him this on the other hand even though it is more closely proportioned to the legendary pictures Godzilla, it is still just a weird looking design. But like I said, I am growing to like it more and more. And I think definitely spending more time with this figure, I might I might be swayed all the way. We'll see, but oh uh, yeah. Jaw articulation, that is nice. Apparently if you see the texture on the inside of his mouth there. From what I understand, that was a feature of this guy that wasn't really shown off in the, in the film. But he was meant to have... Uh, I forgot what it's called. They're these... That you've probably seen these videos up on YouTube where people just chuck in random crap into these. But they're, they're like these cogs that kind of 
swerve together in big rows and they're designed to tear apart metal bits and apparently in his mouth that's kind of what what they uh, intended to have in there so he's gonna have a quite an aggressive bite to him so that's really cool this version of Mechagodzilla also has really tiny weird little red dots for eyes kind of in slightly in a strange position on his head I think they're a little bit off to the side looking a little weird he's a weird looking face to be honest it's very iconic for this design. And the mouth articulation I really like on this thing because he doesn't have like this huge underbite like the Playmates figure has, which if I bring it in, this is the Playmates figure. Of course, this is, you know, this is a children's toy. It's cheap. You can get it for next to nothing if you can actually find it in stores. But it's got this really derpy jaw articulation where you close it, there's a big gap towards the inner part of his jaw but when you open it it kind of wedges out a bit far whereas this one has a nicely proportioned bite it looks a little bit more natural when you open it and I'm, I'm I'm scared to again mess with it too much to see how far I can push it I can kind of get it that far but hopefully it goes a little further because I would like to maybe put in Rodan's proton beam the 90s Rodan from uh, Monster Arts they released that one with kind of like a cool purple beam which I think would actually match this guy here. Even though he had a red beam in the film. It's a shame this guy didn't come with an effect part, but I'm usually not really too fussy about Monster Arts figures not coming with effect parts, because for 90% of the time I don't use them. So I'm not too fussed. Okay, he's got some nice articulation. Oh yeah, I like that. You can see all those like pistons and stuff moving in there, just under his chest. I like that. And then, in theory, this part of his arm should move... So this shoulder bit, that moves up, there is like a twisty bit here, this bit I'm assuming has an articulation point here, yes, that's very stiff so I'm going to be careful of that. This one looks like it burns this way and this way and it might twist, oh yeah, it twists very easily, I mean not very easily, it, it actually feels nice and firm, but compared to the way the bending of this, uh, it, it, it's, it's very tight. And there's like a ball joint for the hand, which at the moment they're in this sort of more closed position, which looks cool. I, I dig that. The hands are nicely done. Yeah. Uh, and I know people are complaining about the pistons on his legs here, but... Oh, that's nice. Like, I'm just subtly moving it, and I don't know how delicate these really are. But I don't plan on playing with it too much, but actually just seeing that move is actually really satisfying. So if we we take a look at the pistons here, look at that. That looks really cool. Like I know people are complaining about that being too delicate and that it should have come without that feature. I don't know. I like that. It looks very technical and mechanical and kind of would be sad if it didn't have that component. Oh, look at that. It's just every angle of this thing has so much detail. But the back of the legs here. See the underside of his feet. Unfortunately, his feet aren't really very articulated. I think... can't tell if this is die-cast metal or, or plastic. Because a lot of these Mechagodzillas have die-cast metal feet from Monster Arts. But I think this is just plastic. Oh, I can see this actually screwed on. Maybe that is die-cast metal. has been attached with a screw. That's a little different. For Monster Arts figure. Interesting. The spines on this thing look good. They're they're quite a bit bigger than the Playmates version. And I think even the Bandai vinyl. So that looks good. Let's bring in the Bandai vinyl. The Bandai vinyl is great. But, you know, Monster Arts is always going to win out against the Bandai vinyl at the end of the day. Actually really similar in scale. This The Monster Arts is a touch bigger. They look good together. They do look good together. The Playmates figure here. Yeah, this one... I like that this one has articulation, the Playmates one, but it just, it's... Ah, oh, it looks so cheaply made. It looks so bad compared to this thing. See, we're on the back of the figure here. Lots of beautiful detail, even between the spines. The tail, which again, look at that. Nice articulation, very smooth. Holds pretty well too. I am happy with that. I like the tail on this thing. Looking really good. 
legs here are very chunky. They articulate like so. I, again, I'm not pushing this articulation. I'm being very conservative about the amount I push it, but that's a nice feature there. That pivot there. I don't think there's a swivel in his foot or a sideways swivel, uh, so an ankle pivot. I'm not feeling it, although the, I think that mm, it does have it. Okay. There is a there is a joint there. Again, it's kind of stiff. So I'm going to be, be careful with it, more so than typical monster arts figure, I guess. But, you know, again, once it's kind of messed with fiddle, I'll be a lot more confident with this guy. But this is just after I got it, and when I'm fiddling with this thing on camera, it's a little bit more precarious than when I'm actually putting my full concentration into just feeling him out versus trying to show you guys on camera. So I'm not going to be too crazy with that. Got a sort of rib section here where there is a bit of variation in the gray inside there. Again, I would have liked to have seen more of that, but there, you know, there's there's variation throughout them. And the sculpt is so nice on this thing. It's technically seamless because the joints on this thing are the same joints that he should have as a robot in himself, which is why I really like a lot of these Mechagodzilla figures from Monster Arts because they're just so seamless in a lot of ways and Monster Arts is just really good at getting that detail so crisp. So for something like this, it looks really nice. This neck's got, you know, that kind of articulation. Can't really bend up too far. And the body has next to no articulation, I think. Like the main chunk of his body. So that's a, a bit of a shame. But it's kind of to be expected with the way this thing's put together. But that front chest piece almost looks like this piece can come off or something but maybe they're gonna do a battle damaged variant one day which would be pretty cool. They'll probably actually do some slightly more dynamic paint work on them. We'll see if they actually do that. I would like that but um, I don't know if it'll be worth getting another one at that point but we'll see. I mean you never know they might not put, put it out at all. Of course, we got this uh, cool little doo-whack here on the end of his tail. Lovely texturing under here. It's very bone-like, skeletal-like, this sort of design for his tail. Really, really cool. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a couple of other figures just to compare this thing size-wise and sort of quality-wise. But yeah, just taking it all in, I'm pretty happy with this thing. I'm not going to do the hands just yet. So I can show you guys what they look like. So these look like you can slide a piece of paper or something between his fingers there and have him holding something. So that's cool. You can mess around with that. And same with this hand. So they're just kind of like these sort of closed hands as opposed to uh, yeah this kind of shape. Interesting. Would have I would have liked to have seen a few more variants when it comes to the hands as opposed to just having this and this. But it works for what it is, and I bet you can kind of mess with those anyway, because they seem to be made of a softer plastic, so you can probably stick stuff under there without worrying about it breaking too much. So that's pretty sweet. Anyway, let's bring in a couple of mecha figures from Monster Arts, for example. We got Mogira from Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, the 90s film. Really cool. This is one of uh, Monster Arts' more early mecha, mecha figures, far more basic. They look nice together. This one looks very, very uh, detailed and dense with detail compared to this one, which is really sort of sleek and simple. But the 90s Mechagodzilla, again, this one was just very sleek and smooth and kind of simple. I'm not a huge actual fan of this particular design of Mechagodzilla. And this particular figure from Monster Arts also kind of feels a little bit different to their typical stuff. It's a lot more simple and smoothed down and the seam lines are quite big in, in, in it. Especially around the back uh, spines there and uh, around the sides here. So I have kind of mixed feelings in this figure in particular. But these do look really cool together. Two very different versions of Mechagodzilla. Here I've got the original 1974 Mechagodzilla from Monster Arts. I think it's a really cool uh, gear from them as well. I have a few nitpicks with it as a lot of people do. But I still really love this thing. He's a very sort of bright aluminium color whereas this guy is a slightly darker more gunmetally gray color compared to him 
But there we guys go. We got the original Mecha Godzilla versus the the uh, newest Mecha Godzilla, and they look so different. Very different. Although to this day, the seventy four Mecha Godzilla is still my absolute favorite version of Mecha Godzilla. I I'm a huge fan of this guy and the film that he's in in particular. I figured I'd bring in Godzilla from the same film, although technically this is the 2019 version, but it's the same exact sculpt and figure as the 2021 version. I actually got the, the Godzilla vs. Kong figure over there near Ghidorah. So I just thought I'd rather bring in this one for this comparison. So Godzilla is a bit smaller. I'm not sure if that's accurate. In the film, it does look like Mechagodzilla is bigger than Godzilla, or at least a lot of the time he seems to be above Godzilla, whereas Godzilla's kind of like down and angling up when they're fighting. But I do feel like this one might be a touch too big. It's hard to say whether they're accurate in scale or not. This might be accurate, but I, I did recently rewatch the film and... Though Mega Godzilla is definitely a little bigger, I'm not sure. This could be a t tiny bit off. But they do still look really cool together, and we actually finally have... A <laughs> well, I actually... You guys probably have had this thing for ages now in your collection. Uh, at least a, a number of you. But, uh, like I said, this thing took a long time to actually get to me. But uh, I finally have a version of this Mega Godzilla to pair with my other monster arts figures from that film, which, uh, speaking of, got a Kong here, and again, same thing as the Godzilla from that film, this Kong feels like he's just a little bit small compared to this guy, but still, we got the, the whole trio of kaiju from that movie now in figure form, which is always really cool. Again, I'm gonna bring in the Bandai Vinyl, which is, at the moment, my next favorite version of this Mecha Godzilla in my collection down. I actually have the big Playmates figure which I also really like but um, it's kind of a little tricky to pull out right now so I'm not going to compare them. You know you guys have seen that one it's just it's just like the Playmates figure but much bigger and kind of a bit more crisp looking but uh, they, they, it doesn't really scale with this one at all. Well these two yeah real nice. The Bandai Vinyl even though it is a lot simpler it still has a lot of detail to it and looks really cool. Very, very cool. They, they look really similar in a lot of ways. I think if you were to squint your eye a little bit, it can be somewhat hard to tell the two apart. Just from a distance at least. But um, yeah, this one's definitely got a lot more going, going on detail-wise and especially on the hips and all those sort of seam line areas like that where this guy has a lot of the seam lines and it's just simplified to make the sculpt actually work in a vinyl form. His little Playmates figure again. So, yeah, this one does have articulation, but he feels really loose and floppy and it's kind of hard to pose, especially his tail kind of actually gets in the way of him standing properly, which is a little bit of a bummer. And his detail is kind of hit and miss. He does have a lot of red though, so I guess that makes some people happy. But uh, yeah, you can definitely tell it's the same, same kaiju, the same design here. But one thing that I really, really prefer on the Monster Arts is the spines. I mean, obviously, they just, they're so much bigger and have a much more decisive shape to them. Whereas these are just kind of really, really generic looking. They're almost all the same size and they're done in this weird, inaccurate red. So yeah, obviously, this guy really knocks this one out of the park. And here we got the third party Ready Player One. Mechagodzilla figure. So this is the one that showed up on AliExpress. No one knows who made it or, you know, the story behind it really. But you can compare the two and actually, surprisingly, scale kind of close. The Monster Arts is still a little bit smaller in scale, even though it almost looks the same just here, just because it's kind of a more chunky design in a few spots, but it's actually not a bad comparison. These two actually look pretty good together, surprisingly. So there we go, Ready Player One Mecha Godzilla and the Monster Arts Godzilla vs. Kong Mecha Godzilla. Surprisingly. So yeah, maybe this guy really is a touch too big to fit with the Monster Arts line as far. Hard to say. Here's the Bandai vinyl of the 1975 Mecha Godzilla, so 
and compare the two here. So this is basically just a, a variation of the original 74 Mechagodzilla. Some elements have been changed. I still really, really dig this design. And these two look really cool together. Again, this guy is really chunky for a Monster Arts figure. So that is my unboxing and initial sort of review of this guy. I really dig this thing. Yeah, it would have been nice to have seen some more paint variation on this guy, for example. Uh, I don't really think that's an issue. This guy has so much detail already going on. It's, it, it's just such a busy looking sculpt that it really doesn't detract from it, I don't think. The articulation where I've messed with it so far is really cool. Uh, seems like you can get a pretty good flow of motion from this guy, but it does feel stiff in a few areas and at present I'm a little bit worried just to mess with it, so I, I can't really fully review the articulation as of yet, but the tail's great, I'll say that much. Fortunately the, the hands it does have swappable hands, so I'm not a huge fan of bits that are swappable versus them articulating just as they are, but I think with the way they are, his hands it probably is for the best, just to, to make sure that nothing breaks or whatnot, compared to if they were so fragile and tiny and articulating, you know. So that's fair. Uh, and, yeah, detail-wise, absolutely phenomenal. Completely knocked it out of the park with this thing. Really, really, really good attention to detail. Looks very accurate to the film. Really like that. And yeah, I'm I'm actually pro piston at the moment, but we'll see if it ends up having some issues later on. I might uh, revisit this guy in an updated video and let you guys know. But for the moment, I'm really pleased with this thing. A good addition to the Monster Arts line. So yeah, that is it for this unboxing video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed meeting Little Coffee. Come on, Little Coffee. Say goodbye to everyone. <laughs> Come on. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Hey, all your vinyl, be a radiated vinyl. Bye.